What's up, everyone? Welcome to Barstool Breakdown. Today is Saturday, April 13th, and we got a great show for you today. But before I get into that, once again, we appreciate all of you that already subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, click down below and subscribe, please. We're trying to get the boys to a thousand. We're already over 700. Get the boys to a thousand. Road to a thousand. We're trying to get there. Please like, subscribe. We got an interview this week with the Couch Boy, the Voice God, the Scoof Master, Connor Griffin. Let's get it. It gets dirty as fuck. This is that. I should be over at the All right, we're here with a very special guest. He's a couch boy on Mostly Sports. He's the voice god. You might also know him as Scoof Master. It's Connor Griffin. How we doing, brother? I'm doing great. Thank you, boys, for having me. I noticed that Jonathan has the, the scoof on the whiteboard back there, which is a nice little extra touch. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and even on top of that, you can't really see it because there's no room on the whiteboard, but uh, it says hashtag family. My camera here is like, you know, 1080 max, so no one's going to pick that up, but I, I try. I love it. Family. Yeah, Thank you, boys. Right. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't I mean, know if that was sketch or if that was Brandon. I didn't know. I didn't know if that was sketch or if that was acknowledging Roman Reigns. I was pointing <laughs> down because I wasn't going to acknowledge Roman Reigns. Acknowledge, yes, oh, I know right. you don't yeah. acknowledge. You, you don't. Uh, you don't. You, what were you saying? You don't acknowledge Klingons. Yeah, I, I don't. Klingons. 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 There you um, go. Yeah. The the amount of Star Trek references on the show have gotten out of hand recently. I need to. I need to draw a line in the sand on that. So I do not acknowledge the Klingons. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you're taking a stance on something. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to before we hop into mostly sports, which is a phenomenal show, by the way. And you know, Brandon Walker did it, did his best to remind us that you are a part of that team when I mentioned just him and Titus at f first, because you guys are. It's a huge show, but I think your story goes back further than that. And like, you're one of those guys is kind of like, uh, from what I was reading, it's like similar path to Fistuli to where you were a vice. Well, no, he because it was Fistuli a vice or I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, yeah he was. You were a vice Roy. You know, you had this. Um, you, you were into sports journalism at Penn State. So how was that? You know, what got you into Barstool? Just was it being at college? And uh, yeah, how how was that hiring process coming out, out of college as a viceroy? Yeah, uh, I was on the very serious journalist path where I was doing all of the journalism classes. I was in like studio uh, uh, traditional newsrooms where I was giving – reports i was an anchor you know i was doing like hard not hard hitting stories it's college but in college i was taking all those serious classes yeah, and i always thought that was post paternal right i'm sorry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i, yeah, I yeah. graduated yeah, i got to college 2018 and then i graduated from college 2022 um so yeah i was Jesus. doing all that like very serious stuff and then uh covid hit and i i forget who exactly told me but i had a mentor in school it was like, hey, start making like videos on your own. You can't be doing any of this stuff that you do in the studio. I also did like student radio. You can't be doing any of that, but you could be making videos at home and being resourceful while you're just, you know, away from all of the resources that you have here on campus. So I said, sure. And I just started making a bunch of videos. And it was also right around the time where uh, Dave was doing the unboxings. There was the the caller daddy drama, big cats doing, you know, all this stuff with Doug's and <laughs> that entire time during COVID, I was starting to become more creative in what I was doing and I was getting less and less serious. And then I was also opening my eyes like, holy shit, ESPN is tanking. All mm -hmm. these other networks have nothing to talk about. Meanwhile, Barstool is exploding with all this content. And uh, that's when I really decided, like, I should probably go more into the creative side, the social side, and ultimately uh, caught the eye. I had a connection at Penn State Barstool, caught their eye, came onto the team, and then I helped run. This was my junior year, and then my senior year, I helped run the account um, while still doing some stuff that was more traditional, like radio. Right, were you, you were still like, out there doing doing your, like, were you still calling games, like, for D1 Sports and stuff at that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was um, for com radio at Penn State is what we were on calling games. So I was calling football, got to travel to a bunch of different games, which was cool. Uh, basketball, I called uh, some random sports, baseball, soccer, hockey is uh, abysmal to call on radio. I <laughs> kudos to anybody who does that. It's so hard. But I was doing that. I was doing talk radio. And then I was also 
working sidelines for Penn State football, where I would like interview the lettermen on the field who are coming back for the game. Uh, Blue white game, our spring game, which is actually coming up this week. I got to be on the Jumbotron. Like Micah Parsons came back, and we had Lavar Arrington there, and I was doing the interviews for the Jumbotron. So I was still doing that stuff all while Barstool. And I kind of had to keep it low key that I was running Penn State Barstool because my bosses in the athletic department or my bosses at the radio station would not have liked if they knew I was like also running the page uh, for Penn State Barstool. So that was always the the weird dilemma. But then through that, got the internship at Barstool uh, just through the Viceroy program and then got hired full time August of 2022. And I've been here since. So that's the the long answer to your short yeah. question. But no, no, I, I mean, we appreciate the story. You know, that that's that's why we're Barstool. Yeah, that's right what this down. show is. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're here to learn all about that type of shit because that, you know, we find that super interesting and an interesting part of that. Uh, hey, just to were, clarify real quick, when I went, oh, shit, when you said I graduated in 2022, I graduated in 2011 from college. So I'm old yeah. as fuck. I just want to make sure we clarify. That's why I said that. So Yeah, no, no, no I, I got you. And that's <laughs> always been, especially now that I've been more on camera with mostly sports, people either think I'm 20 or I'm 40. And uh, you're an old lot. ass soul, dude. I am. Why. I am. Yeah. But I, I get that a lot where it's like people have no idea how old I, I'm only 24. Um, and I'm very grateful that this has yet been my only job out of college. And I've been able to just go straight into this and it's been a blast so far. But yeah, still a lot to learn. Still a lot to learn for sure. Yeah, it's a great thing. So it's like uh, getting into that bar stool in that COVID content era that, it, that you know, seemed to kind of win you over. You're like, hey, like, stop taking myself so serious all the time it was, it was that kind of like you know because it seems to be the mantra of barstool is like it's a bunch of dudes who fucking love sports or you know love what they you know whatever they're into mm -hmm. and they don't take themselves like too serious to you, you know they still get their points across by just seeming like a common fucking dude and it makes us all a fan of it it's awesome yeah and i think what i really started to see again going back to like how I couldn't even watch ESPN during that time. Granted, that may never happen again where they have no sports to talk about, but their programming just took a massive dip. And I realized there might be other options out there. Not saying I wasn't familiar with Barstool beforehand, right. but I was like, this is a new wave of content in the social sphere where there are no restrictions and you could talk about whatever and you don't have to be you know, totally confined to one uh, mindset or one ideology when it comes to content, you could just be free. And that's where I really started to see this might be a better pathway. Because the, the, the mantra for us in journalism school was always get a degree and then go to a, a random TV local station in Sheboygan, work your way up market by market until eventually, hopefully, you could get to like a Chicago or a Philly or a New York but it's years and years of grinding. Yeah, that's a grind. Yes. And I credit anybody who does it. I have one of my mentors is in the middle of doing it right now. He's out in Vegas and he's killing it. But it's been a lot of time and a lot of effort. And I realize this might be a better pathway, a barstool route or any other place that's looking to do digital sports content or just any content in general. Uh, so that's when I really made the pivot. And you're right, Jonathan. It is mainly because you're more free. You could say whatever you want to say. It is more of a a passionate following, I would say. Right. I don't know how many like diehard ESPN fans there are. There are obviously <laughs> diehard schoolies like yourself. So I thought, yeah, yeah that, that's probably the better route to go for me. And if not for COVID, then yeah, I, I would not have made that decision probably. Yeah, yeah COVID, I, I think covid was like unbelievable, man. I feel like that's where like I was thinking about it now. Jonathan said that was one of the you know, biggest moments that just kind of like brought Barstool to him was around the COVID time. For me, the same thing. I wasn't like a massive, massive stoolie until I tell everyone I got COVID and I was in the hospital for eight straight days and I just watched Barstool shit nonstop. That's how I became like a huge stoolie because I watched stool scenes and I was like, this place fucking rocks. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because you going to Barstool from, you know, doing sideline reporting, doing play by play, that's kind of stuff. And like I said before, the voice God, dude, your voice is insane not to glaze too much but like it's yes. just like the perfect it's the perfect play-by-play -play voice i say it all the time and it's funny because like i always say like oh you and jake marsh need to work together or whatever i don't know if that would work honestly because jake is so straight like i love when you call like the horse races or you do like the other things like the uh case race thing that the intro you did you don't like 
you're not afraid to like mix it up and say some shit that Jake wouldn't say. So, you know what I mean? Like, I love that you take it that extra notch. Um, do you want to do more stuff like that? Like, cause I would love to see you calling like the mini golf, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I would love to first and foremost work with Jake Marsh. We'd never really had like an opportunity. Usually it's him paired with like a content person. Right. Um, but I just know from my experience calling games, doing and this was mainly for radio tv is a different set of rules and it's i think easier much easier than radio but i was never the best play-by-play -play guy if you really had to like describe a play and paint a, a picture for somebody who can't see what you're seeing that wasn't really my specialty my specialty was in the color comment yeah so Drake, I, I think jake is incredible when it comes to play-by-play -play. yeah and if i could kind of add the color i think that could be a good back and forth um but yeah the mini golf i just, i don't know who's calling it i think nick I think it's jake and nick. yeah it's yeah. nick jake nick and nick Mack. i mean yeah nick we, i had a breakdown tweet up. about it today yeah oh, the, the nick jake. yeah well nick uh when when we had nick on he he talked to us about uh you know how he gets the call with jake frankie had asked him about it like uh you know do you enjoy that do you look for he's like dude i love it because like you know, he said he wants to make Dave Portnoy laugh, but that's a pipe dream. But breaking Jake Marsh is right up there. Like getting Jake Marsh to say fart like he did in the last tournament, yeah. like, you know, just by putting that seed in his head, like, uh, you know, that's what he lives for. And I think it is a good back and forth. But I think like like maybe like uh, with the golf um, where there's a, there is that more like serious tone to it, regardless. Like, what not that some, is that something you think you could do well with him? Like call golf? I. Uh like Maybe. i'm talking about like how the barstool did what, what was it called why am i forgetting the name of it? barstool classic i was thinking more like the like the arizona bowl type stuff or like those That's things where it's like yeah. a more serious event where it's like you and jake could actually be like for real play-by-play -play guys even though i'm sure all the stoolies would just be like oh this sucks we want dave we want dan exactly. because nobody can just ever be happy about anything but i love like, those having though. a barstool like crew would be sick you know what i mean like yeah I don't know. but I also yeah idea. like Dave and Big Cat should be on everything. Yeah, uh, of course. You know, yeah. Obviously, what they can. Um, you know, if they, if they're interested in doing it, yeah, absolutely. Like they are the biggest people in the company. Um, you know, we'll we'll see if there's ever really any opportunities for me. I'm fine in my role right now, and I, I like the fact that, you know, I, I can be kind of unserious on a show like mostly sports, but I also mm -hmm. know that I do have the like serious professional background to you know if, yeah, if we need right. somebody like last minute to come in and try and do something like i'm there uh but at the same time yeah i'm still very low on the totem pole so anybody well, like nick is gonna kill it tomorrow so absolutely. well yeah of course yeah um but i i don't think you're that low i mean brandon when again when we had brandon on he was like you know Connor griffin that kid's gonna be a fucking star and that's right after we brought up pucket and <laughs> yeah. you know like, like that's that's <laughs> He's still it, it, highest praise in the lowest moment. It seemed you talk about being low on that totem pole. What was your path through Barstool so far? Because you know, it, it seemed like we saw you at the, on the Yak, uh, obviously, and like we knew that you're running the Yak account. But what's that path been like to where now you're, you know, when Brandon Mark, Walk or Mark Titus misses a day, you can sit right there with Brandon and act like the Rock and yell to his face. Like that shit's yeah, that there, the there's got to like, mention the that. path from being behind the scenes at the Yak to yelling at Brandon Walker this morning. Like, what what was that kind of, like journey for you? Yeah, and that to pull the, the curtain back a little bit, and if this isn't interesting, we could cut it. It's a <laughs> dilemma that I've kind of like find my, found myself in really for the past couple months. Um, and it's part of the reason why originally when you guys approached me to do this, I was like, ah, like let's let's wait a little bit, like let's hold off. Uh, because I have been on camera a lot more and i love being on camera and as i just told you like that's what i was used to in college and i was constantly on air and doing all that type of stuff but that's not what i was like hired to do yeah. i was yeah, hired it's not the do. job description sure yeah i was behind the scenes i was editing I'm, i was running social i'm still doing all that and the last thing i would want is for one of my co-workers who i respect and i want them to respect me to be like oh well connor's too worried about being on air and he's not doing the responsibilities that he should be doing. So that's part of the reason why I was like hesitant to do this. Also because I thought you could get way more interesting people before you came to me. So, <laughs> and credit to you guys, you have. But anyway, the, my path kind of was started with the yak. I was editing clips, um, running social. I also, at that time, I was editing clips for a million dollars worth of game. Oh, I was shit, really? For, yeah, I was doing that for about six months um and then thankfully um i 
that was taken off my plate because it was it was a lot for my first like six months. I enjoyed doing it, but it, it was oh, very they're, very they're fucking huge. Yeah. Yes, and I'm glad they they got somebody specifically designated to their team mm -hmm. instead of having me where I was doing the yak five days a week and then right. like the weekends I was cutting clips for a million dollars worth of game. Um, but yeah, I was doing that for my first six months, and then leading up, I mean, from January of 2023 through. I guess the move here to Chicago, I was just focusing on Yak and really, really, really trying to make that the best that it could possibly be. By that point, I had developed like a sense of uh, what the voice was for the brand on social, mm -hmm. what people liked, uh, what got the most interaction. And I was just going heavy on that, doing whatever I could, um, trying to think of new ways to be creative and to not just have it be a generic social page that just post clips all the time. Like I wanted to do new stuff. Um, that's when I was like, Oh, I could put together a yak basketball documentary, or I could try and do the yak stats account, which hopefully one day I could bring back, but I don't know. Um, but just different stuff like that. And then, yeah, when it came to moving to Chicago, I wanted to be on the wave. I did not like living in New York. Technically mm -hmm. I never lived in Manhattan. I lived in Brooklyn and then Jersey city. Uh, it, did not like either experience. Did no, not I like hate Jersey. Those City. commutes suck, dude. Did, yeah. And well, we're actually we're gearing up towards the time of year where they suck the most when the weather starts to get warm and especially in the summertime and you're sweating next to somebody on the subway and then you're walk it's it's <laughs> the worst. So I, I wanted to move out here to Chicago, not really knowing if it was gonna be any better. Uh, but I was like, okay, I, I just gotta get out of New York, even though I, I love thank God for movie. Mook. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, wasn't there an issue with like there was a Connor situation? There was only like one so Connor. In the, how'd that yeah, work? Yeah, I still don't know the the full story with that because I get confused when Big Cat said it. But I just know Big Cat said at the office one day, he's like, "Hey, if you guys work on a show or maybe would have some like reason to move out to Chicago, like come talk to me, we can talk about it." And so I went up to him. I was like, "Hey, I'm on the Yak. I know the Yak is moving to Chicago. I would." like to move with you guys and he said oh yeah, yeah that's no problem and i thought i was good and then all of a sudden yeah i found out months later that <laughs> there was a mix-up where maybe i was mook and I, I i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> the other way too honestly like i was thinking about it too when he was telling the story i mean the only reason i think people thought he was thinking mook is because mook is content and was on camera on yeah. the act sometimes and stuff like that you know what i mean but i mean i'm not gonna lie dude you said it earlier i'm glad we didn't have you on this podcast until now either because now you're fucking i mean one of my questions here it says titus is getting worried you're getting too big for mostly sports because of all your insane content no I mean, that, big for his britches man that's they yeah, that's that's you know i know you'll I never it up for the camera. i'm hoping that you'll give us a story that you haven't broke on mostly sports yet because i don't think you realize when you say things sometimes you're like jackie almost on kfc radio where they're just like wait Say that story again. Calm down. Don't just <laughs> move past that. Like, you know. <laughs> no, no. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I have any right now. But uh, well, they, they're just random. I know that for a fact. They'll just yeah. come out. I can't ask you one. They're just it'll just come out like naturally. So it'll be perfect. So it, it's pretty late in the day. Maybe I'll get a little bit loopy. Yeah. Something will happen. But uh, <laughs> you know, so I guess after the whole like big cat book situation, whatever that was, um, I was cleared and I was able to come out here, but before I moved out here, uh, Brandon approached me and, um, I, I worked with Brandon through the yak a little bit. Right. Um, and we were familiar. I, you know, say, yeah. we'd say hi to each other in the hallways. We'd talk ball, whatever. And he said, I'm putting together a show for Chicago. Didn't mention with who didn't mention what it was going to be. And he was like, we're trying to put together a team. Would mm -hmm. you want to be a part of it? And I said, yeah. And he was like, well, are you moving to Chicago? I said, I think I am. I, I, like, I got the green light unofficially, but yeah. So he was like, okay, well, keep that on your mind if you can handle it. And then we'll see what happens when we get out to Chicago. So from that point on, it was probably a period of about like two to three months where it was me, Ebo, TJ, and Brandon. And then I didn't meet Mark until he came out to New York. I guess it was for the dozen playoffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't meet him until then. And then we had a, a full sit down, the five of us hashing out what the show was going to be. And then, yeah, from that moment on, it was always, okay, well, I now know I'm going to get 
an extra mic on the show. Um, and yeah, it's been just trying to figure out what my role is and trying to figure out how to make the show better. And I think we've all done a really solid job, uh, all five of us of knowing what our lane is, knowing how we can improve the show and overall just interacting with each other in a way where we can build off of one another and support each other. So that's pretty much when you ask, like, how did it get here? Mm -hmm. Um, that that's pretty much the story. Yeah. It was a conversation I had with Brandon that's transformed into this awesome team chemistry that's yeah. bolstered everybody up and it's been great. Yeah. It's to where we're getting to know Connor Griffin more and you know, that, that whole family dynamic you guys have. And you know, you said it, it's, it's a phenomenal show and we told Brandon the same it's uh, and it, you guys kind of carved out your own path. It's it's different than any other show. It's mostly, you know, one one second you're talking about Caitlin Clark seriously, and the next second you're talking, you know, you're off watching Mr. Ed again. Yeah. Like, it, that it's something very unique, and I think you guys have really, like, your following is is, is going to be very, like, um, specific to you guys, I guess. I, I don't know. Like, that whole family thing, like, I don't know who came up with the family hashtag to start it off, but it it, it crushed because, like, oh, even shit. when we see I didn't what? wear my family shirt. I should have wore it. That was stupid. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, Actually, no, I didn't wear it for Brandon either. So whatever. It, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's so much family like that. It's gone to the point of you know you're at Brandon's house for Easter, and I know the bit is dead, but I gotta know. I we gotta get into this. The whole Caitlin Walker. When did what was the first first? You know, uh, I I'm losing my words today. You could tell it's late. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that happened with that to really just get it all going because it seemed I, I don't know if it's like on his third leg fourth leg but then yeah it's dead now i think third um okay for starters i was not at his house for easter i just want to clear that <laughs> okay i was he gonna got, say we're just spreading false info on this yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. for the I, end now <laughs> i came into the office the day after that happened the day after easter and uh he goes where the fuck were you guys out Boy, like where were you and uh I was like, oh, we're at some restaurant. And he goes, okay, <laughs> people are thinking that you are at my house. And oh. I was like, yeah, no, obviously I wasn't at your house. You know I wasn't at your house. But no, uh, he has that many books. No, anyway. I'm pretty sure on the yak he said it though. Like he was playing into it. There was something like he was like, you know, yeah. you show, you know, do you come to a guy's house and you're not dressed a certain way? He was pissed off at how you were dressed. There's like yeah. no, no tie to Easter. That that was the whole bit. So he played into that. Yeah, and he does play into it. Oh yeah, very well. Even though yeah, I, I did nip in the butt. But anyway, the first instance was. I went to uh, the Flyers were in town. I'm a Philly sports mm -hmm. fan and followed, you know, Philly sports ever since I was a little kid. And I had never been to the United Center. And here the Flyers are coming into town. I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go to a Flyers game. So I went to Paige, who's our office manager, and she's also from Philly. Um, and when I say she's also from Philly, she's actually from Philly. I'm from the suburbs. But she's best friends with Caitlin. And they were the only two people in the office who took me up on the offer. And so it was the three of us. We went to the United Center. We saw the Flyers and Blackhawks. And I sent a picture to our group chat, the Mostly Sports group chat, just me and Caitlin cheesing, like, hey, Brandon. And that was <laughs> all it was. And then yeah. they turned it into an a entirely different story on air. I was not expecting. I, I mean, but well, what were you, you doing there. sending him a message saying, hey, Brandon, with a picture with his yeah. sister? You were yeah. trying to get yourself a nice story on air. <laughs> no, 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 I, I was just doing it because I, I thought it'd be funny. I, yeah, and then no, it, I wasn't expecting, you know, the whole pucking thing and all that. No, that's, just, that, that's the same lines as me sending a pic to the group chat, you know, like of, of me and a girl like had a great time with her tonight and telling the boys all about it. Like that. I feel like that's what your angle was. <laughs> and, yeah, maybe. You're like, man, was, I had a great time with these two girls tonight. And, and you're like, Oh shit, I forgot family. <laughs> I so granted, I, I guess I should have seen it coming based off of how they treated my mom coming into the office. Oh, uh, dude. I, I've got a question about that. I guess I'll just throw that since you brought it up organically. Yeah, no. So when when you search Connor Griffin, the second re recommended search on Google is Connor Griffin mom barstool. Is it? Thought? Yeah, it's it's the second one. Like it's Connor Griffin barstool, Connor Griffin mom barstool. That, I guess it, I wouldn't it, be able to look that up properly. But uh, I, I should have yeah, screenshot it. I tried to, but it like had a whole tweet of yours, so I couldn't screenshot it properly. Yeah, but it was okay. it, it's it made me it made me chuckle. I sent the like my girlfriend asked me, she was like, "What what are your question notes? You already do your research or whatever?" I was like, "Yeah, the sec the, she, and she laughed her ass off at that. She was like, "His okay. mom's the, the second runner. Yeah, so props to her. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's <laughs> that's that's interesting. I uh, I hate yeah, this I'll so much for you, dude. Like my I was always my mom's a young looking you know woman so 
yeah. I was in your shoes throughout high school, basically. So that was <laughs> every time this comes up, I'm just like in my insides. I'm like, God, I just know how he feels right now. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's one thing to go through it in high school. It's another thing to go through it on air with grown yeah. men uh, right. live <laughs> for, for yeah. you know, thousands of people to see. Um, you know, but obviously, <laughs> yeah, you got it way happened, worse. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> it's no doubt yeah, about that. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> Once that happened, then yeah, I should have known that anything I did that could be blown up and inflated into something big would mm -hmm. be inflated into something big. So yeah, that was what happened with the Caitlin thing. And then and then the second step was the guts tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rod. Um <laughs> what that vision. was by the way, an amazing night. I you guys didn't ask about how it was. It was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I got questions uh, for that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so much fun. And as I said, I think I said it on the show, and I think I said it on the yak when they brought me on that day too. Uh Caitlin was the perfect guest, was super helpful and was like, Yeah, yeah, I'll go get this while you go get the the shirt, and then I'll take pictures and I'll take videos and blah 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 blah. blah. So that was a, a great time, could not have gone any better. <laughs> uh and then yeah, it was Easter Sunday, where again it was a group of us, right. where it was me, Caitlin, Paige, and Mook, who were all just going out to uh, just a random chain restaurant because we all were uh, alone on Easter, where our families are you know hundreds of miles away. I love were, that. Yeah, let's just go get some food, and yeah. then it turned into this whole thing where we wind up at a really nice restaurant, and that's where the picture was taken. So that is uh, the last of the the Caitlin Walker. Uh, yeah, because drama. Nikki fucking smokes. Yeah, I was gonna say it's my yeah. my next thing on here was seemed like the Nikki smokes post was upsetting, and now that's over. So clearly, I, I forget what else I looked into that. Like I so like I, obviously like he's he's done it before with her. He's taking a picture with her like while they were out. Like mm -hmm. I, I think he's just stealing bits though. There's another bit I have to look at his Twitter again. But he was he's stealing someone else's bit too. Uh, oh yeah, he was he was FaceTiming Brandon's mom. That's oh, I didn't know that. that was my next. I would the next thing I was gonna say was I loved when you when you were hanging, he was hanging up the phone and you were like, I love you. So yeah. I was like, You you're always playing into that shit too. Like you you play the innocent role pretty well because you're like, I know, I'm just trying to do this, whatever. And then you do some shit like that. And I'm just like, All right, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and it, it is always a weird again, going back to like the dilemma I kind of find myself. Like, I'm not a ball buster, like that's not right. who I am. So that's why it's been interesting, like on a show like Mostly Sports, where we do get really silly and we do stuff like that. That you got two of the biggest ball busters on in Barstool, completely exactly. for sure, one hundred percent. So it is nice because I do get to kind of learn from them, and I don't know if you could adopt those type of tendencies, but I I try and play into the bit as much as I can. But there are times where I do get very uncomfortable, and I'm like, yeah. I I don't know if this if I should be going any further with this, but uh, yeah, no. So that Nikki Smokes, by the way. I love Nikki Smokes. I don't know what? how many people have come on here and cut said this. I cut love this. Nikki Smokes. Um, <laughs> wait, what'd you say? He's I said cut, cut this. this. I was just kidding. He's a friend of the program. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's been on here before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Nikki someone Smokes. said someone said he looked like me when he shaved his face. So I was like, oh god, the fuck. I mean, we definitely don't look alike at all. I think we just have big eyebrows. That's why. So I, mean, I, uh, I don't <laughs> I know. Can I can see it. Kind of see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with him clean shaven, I can kind of see it a little bit. But then again, right. I'm only looking at you through a tiny box. That's so cool, like, still actually. Yeah, I'm 35, so it's or I'll be 35 in a month, so it's good actually. He's a young kid. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Tate Tate was just saying that we just had Tate on. Tate said, you know, Nikki Smokes has been one of the coolest guys, most welcoming dudes. Like, obviously, yeah. Smokes is still newer, but uh, yeah, seems so, like he, he's a good dude. Yeah, and when it comes to me choosing not to keep going down this whole like Caitlin Walker saga route. Um, it, even crazy how I'm like talking about this as if it's like, a, a, you know, a saga, um, but yeah, it's going to continue. I don't know why you think it's ending. This yeah, is not it, ending. It has, it has nothing to do. This. It has nothing to do with, will continue. Yeah, I guess maybe uh, it has nothing to do with Nikki smokes as a person. It's more so just, it's gotten to a point where I don't know how much more we could do uh, besides like, Caitlin and I actually get married for real. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you said that because I thought that was going somewhere else. Jesus dude, Christ! E even no, but like there are people around the office for a very long time who are like they pull me aside. They're like, Connor, be serious. Like, are you actually dating Caitlin? I'm like, no. Like it's 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 a bit. <laughs> like, yeah, right, it's, just, right. it's just it's just for the show. Um, but Caitlin's great, and she also she was running with that tenfold, way more than I was. Oh, yeah. She was, 
yeah um but anyway but she's, she's killing it she's yeah no. killing it with that bit she's yeah, pulling, everything putting up the nikki smokes tweet i mean obviously broke your heart fakely um but it was just such a perfect tweet i think i wrote w caitlin on the tweet because i was just like that's hilarious because she wrote like people are going to be confused as hell who i'm dating now because it was like nikki you know facetime and mama walker or whatever so yeah no so it, it just got got too muddy got way too muddy towards the end and i was like yeah <laughs> it, this is probably the right time to cut it off for now maybe it comes back later i don't know but uh yeah, Mark said it on the show all the time. He's like, dude, you're working yourself into a shoot here. Like, you're not going to be able to get an actual girlfriend because. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, I didn't even think of that. That's true. The bit gets bigger than the show. And yeah. then it's like, ah, oh, shit. Like, how do we actually explain this to people? Like, this exactly. is. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm happy with uh, where it's been left off. And we'll, well, yeah, we'll see what happens down the road. But yeah, no, I'm sure. Just, something will it, happen. I'll say it's good. It'll come up again for sure. You know how the Barcelona universe works. But I think it, it's, it was a great bit. I'm not going to lie. I think Brandon played into it perfectly. You'd played into it perfectly. Um, but you were talking about the Olivia Rodrigo concert, and I guess it doesn't matter. It could be this or it could be anything, but there's a video that Robbie Fox tweeted about WrestleMania. I'm not sure if you saw it, but it was like the three of the guys, Nate, Robbie, and uh, Brandon sitting in the box, whatever. And they're just reacting to the different things that happened at WrestleMania. And like the WrestleMania video, it's like up top is them reacting, and the bottom is like all the WrestleMania stuff. I need yeah. you to just cut that out and just put Olivia Rodrigo clips <laughs> and have them reacting to that or something. I was thinking about it earlier. I'm like, I'm like, what can we put there? Maybe we do that. Maybe we could do that from the breakdown, actually. So who knows? Yeah. Well, that'd be great too. <laughs> I um I also have my own like personal reactions to that concert. Again, Caitlin was like filming some stuff. Uh, I don't know how much she got, but that's somewhere where oh, we need I'm that. just like a fist pumping and like losing my shit over vampire or you know uh good blind for karaoke you. blind karaoke what song do you pick for her uh, of olivia rodrigo's yeah, yeah yeah good for you is too basic <laughs> yeah you don't you don't want to be basic when you're singing olivia rodrigo you're right yeah no probably get him back because that's a newer <laughs> okay. one that i don't think many people have done yet but eventually that will become the, the basic one from this album. So I don't know. Yeah, right now I'd probably go get them back. It, karaoke of, is a very it's well, serious. How many of her songs me. could you blind karaoke of hers? You could blind karaoke all of her songs? Uh knowing every single lyric, probably like 50, 60%. I mean, that's still fucking Jesus impressive. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I you're, listen, you're listen, I, you're, it, it's, it seems to me you're listening to Olivia Rodrigo like you're you're watching a college basketball game you're interested in and you're taking notes on it. I might have said it before on the show, but I really don't listen to music a whole lot yeah, because I, I'm the type of person who I have to be locked in on my laptop or on whatever I'm doing if I'm working. Like I can't have other noise. I can't have stuff in the background. So I don't listen to music when I work. And when I'm in the car, typically, like, I'll call my mom, not to bring my mom back up, but I'll, I'll, like, call somebody on the phone or I'm listening to a podcast or I'm listening to some of the shit that we do that I need to catch up on. Um, and I'm, I'm never really listening to music a whole lot. Olivia Rodrigo is one of the few people I will make sure I listen to the entire album. But honestly, in my lifetime, I can't tell you how many albums I've listened to start to finish like i just i don't yeah. it's not what i do and they put me on the spot sometimes and they're like oh what your what's your favorite top five favorite musicians i'm like i really don't know like no nah, that's fair that's i'm a similar way i totally get yeah. it yeah that being said though as I, I i do take karaoke very seriously and i do have some as songs I. that i have in the repertoire there but when it comes to just general music appreciation general music knowledge i'm not that type of guy which yeah, i no. need to work on uh yeah but also you viva hours man you're you're working that, that that's just how it goes so what's your official role um i think like on your linkedin like this is the depth of research we do is like we'll check out your linkedin and be like you know what let's just let's talk about this i think it says like social what was it social it's social media specialist. social media specialist yeah yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah so is that still the role what's the role there i gotta i gotta change that I also realized recently I had like my fucking SAT score on my LinkedIn, like a loser. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know Please how. Please don't change either of, the, either of those things. Hey, leave Please the leave SAT that. score. Yeah. Yeah. Leave those. <laughs> I don't know how much that's been updated, but I, so my contract 
it, it, I was hired as a, a social media specialist, but that has now shifted where I'm no longer in the social media department. I'm in production. Yep. Um, even though that's been kind of like a, a figurehead type of change. Like, yeah, I, it's a gray line between like just, production content. You know, it it's in there. Yeah. Just change I, I, it to couch boy. Yeah, that, that would work. Um, <laughs> that would actually be funny as fuck, dude. If someone went on your LinkedIn, it just said couch boy with your you know, like 1280 SAT or whatever. <laughs> like, I, uh, I still do pretty much the same stuff, almost exactly the same stuff I was doing when I was in the social media department. Now I'm just in production. Um, TJ is actually my, my boss, uh, my oh, direct yeah. boss. Yeah. And I think that's part Sick of why. Boss. Yeah. I, I think that's part of why I made the move to production was because we were both moving out here to Chicago and the department heads were like, yeah, it would make sense for you to work under TJ since you're on the yak and you're going to be on mostly sports. Um, so TJ has been great and he's been a huge person that I've learned from a uh, huge mentor to me. So, um, you know, I, I, I technically am a producer who also does social, but uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how that's going to change because it is a weird situation where the lines are kind of blurred as to what my responsibilities are. Yeah. Uh, but I do pretty much the same stuff every single day. I show up here for mostly sports. I then watch the yak. I do all the editing for the yak. I post for the yak. And that's pretty much what my day is like every single day since it's two daily shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's never any cycle. But I yeah, would die for that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Not. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's been good. But. Yeah, it's tough to explain to people what exactly my no, official sure. title is because yeah. I kind of. Flex. Yeah, I was more so saying like, what are your like daily, you know, what are your responsibilities to the yak? I know you're making graphics. I know you're, you know, running the Twitter account and, uh, you know, you're always there whenever they need Connor Griffin on the show. So it, it, I guess you, you did answer it there. Um, do you edit the highlights? Yeah, like the best of the yaks. Best I do. Of, yeah, oh, my best God, of. dude. Yep. Those are yeah. that's that job must be fucking tedious as fuck dude well i, mean, I watch you, i watch every yak start to finish so like i never actually like watch those fully usually but like that's a lot of well, work it, man. in my head they they like have that. Stephen che they have him they, i mean you know yeah, if you're watching along you make the notes of like when there's yeah. a moment probably that's yeah, just a yeah. guess but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and, and che does uh, the same thing right yeah like re-watching the show you're like all right what's a clip here and then like in the best stuff yeah it's super mm -hmm. smart but uh no you crush that man i mean there's there's days i miss the yak and i have to go back and rewatch it so you're helping us out who those, those of us that like don't like to miss one like oh fuck what happened today even today terrific yak just the three three boys hanging out shooting the shit i loved it yeah yeah uh, so yeah that's that's what i do every day it's it it does like to the outsider, I, I guess it would seem like it's tedious, but once you're doing it, like, and I've been doing it now, I guess I've been doing it for close to like 400 episodes of the show, or maybe like 300 episodes of the show. It, you get a routine going pretty yeah. easy. And it's yeah. not like it's, you know, that bad but you know it's I, I also that's my favorite fucking show and podcast out there so i don't know why i even said that because if i could do that for the yak every day that would be like a dream i guess yeah. it's more like when i'm li listening to myself talk and i fucking hate listening to my own voice trying to find clips for my own podcast is where i'm yeah. like god i fucking hate this so and i, I love really, editing too i love yeah editing, no it's true so yeah yeah good point great. um one other thing you've mentioned earlier about brandon uh approached you about potentially you know working on mostly sports and stuff like that uh, I feel like Ebo was pretty far behind the scenes. Not a lot of people knew who he was in general. Um, I know he was doing, you know, some baseball stuff and things like that um, prior. But did you know him like before mostly or like were you guys tight then or did that happen after the move or whatever? Yeah, he and I sat pretty close to each other in the New York office. Gotcha. Um, the, the social team, for the most part, right. stuck together on the, the second level of that office. Um, so he and I definitely got along very well, pretty much from the beginning. I never have, I've never had any like quarrels with anybody in the office. I've never like disliked somebody. And Ebo is somebody who I love talking to because he's got such a unique brain when it yeah. comes to sports. Like he looks at sports mm -hmm. in a completely different way. So he and I would talk a lot. And then I think where he really started to shine because not many people see what he does every single day on the social side of things and the stuff that he's thinking of and what he's able to do where he came to the forefront was when he started doing stuff with pick central and he was an extra mic in the booth mm -hmm. for that show yeah. in new york 
And that was back when Brandon was still on that show. And I think Brandon, I don't want to speak for Brandon and I don't want to speak for Ebo, but I think Brandon also recognized like, oh yeah, Ebo is a great addition to the show again, because of the way he looks at sports and he adds a completely different perspective than any of us. Uh, and Ebo, as you guys also see on Mostly Sports, is a very funny guy. He had a shit ton of one-liners today where I was cackling, yeah. laughing in my seat. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, we, we've been able to thankfully really develop that relationship and we work hand in hand. He handles the, the prep sheet and all that. I just try and like contribute sometimes, but um, he is very understanding as a teammate and he's very collaborative and we've been able to really grow our relationship just by being on the couch together at the couch that I'm on right now. Uh, but yeah, no, <laughs> Hell we, yeah. We, we, we go back uh, to New York, but he's a couple years older than me. He's been at the company much longer than I have. Um, but we still thankfully have been able to connect. And I think, yeah, uh, our chemistry is great. And he's uh, such a valuable piece to the show because again, none of us look at sports the way that he does and he's on top of everything. So uh, yeah, I love having Evo as a, yeah, as a you could tell with your chemistry. That's why I asked because your chemistry is like perfect. Honestly, like you guys on the couch do go well together. And I was like, damn, did they just like meet and just, like hit it off like that i wasn't sure if you knew each other before that's why i asked that yeah um, no, e ebo i knew tj i worked with every day uh, looking right. back i probably annoyed the fuck out of tj um <laughs> because I, I was so new starting with the act and it was like this big show with big cat on it and i was constantly asking questions because i never wanted to do something without making sure and i'm sure yeah he was just like dude i i don't care <laughs> um but he, he's been great and i've known him since my first day at the company brandon as i said um you know i, I would have yeah. an interaction with him here and there and uh he and i always got along but then yeah titus i didn't really talk to until i first met him in new york and then after that one meeting it wasn't until we were both out here in chicago where we fully started to form a bond and so right. it's been really cool to again learn from him because he does come from a world he was always you know a fun guy and he looked at or i guess covered sports in a different way but he does come from fox he comes from right. like all these different places that are more traditional in the media scape so it was nice to you know obviously meet him and to be able to learn from him and glean from his experiences and everything has been awesome so yeah i love seeing those coming in every day. it's insane that he's like the edgy fox guy and then he comes to barstool and it's like you have no idea yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah you have yeah. no idea what you're in store for guys like it was just epic good jonathan sorry thank you no you're good uh i'm gonna so i have to mention the board obviously you know we introduce it it scoops on the board uh i guess i i want to ask it in kind of a weird way if you could go back in time and you know go tell scoof you know when he's making those videos you'd be like hey keep putting them out those men in oregon they're loving them you got to yeah. keep pushing them would you tell him to keep going or you'd be like you know what do what you're gonna do because one day you're calling the yak world cup so like yeah or maybe it's, a mix of both probably a mix of both because yeah. that was like the, the highlight of my week when I was in middle school, I was like, I cannot wait to do my research on the games <laughs> this week and talk about them and give my picks and everything. I, I love doing that. Um, and, and to this day, I still love doing stuff like that. So I, I would have said, keep going. And honestly, like it is what really kickstarted that whole path for me. And I'm very lucky in the sense that like, there are a lot of people out there, my age, 24, they have no idea what they want to do. I knew from the time that I was like 10 that right. I wanted to be talking about sports. And so that was a very, very, even though it was, you look back at those videos, they're God awful. Uh, that was, a, I don't a know very, about that. Uh, they, you could be honest, Frankie. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're <laughs> not that great. Glaze the whole show. I yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah. You don't have to, I love know, that. He's 10 year old me. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Potter. Potter. I'm going to be Brandon here, okay? We yeah, got to stop right there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, no, 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 no. Like, those were a very, very uh, pivotal, I guess. It was a, a pivotal part of my life where I decided this is what I want to do, and I'm going to just go all in on, all in on that, uh, even though, yeah, it was a dumb YouTube show I was doing from my, my house. But that trickled yeah. into then doing in high school i was doing school news and then that trickled to college where i was then doing all the stuff i talked about before with right. athletics and student radio and it was one after the other 
Um, and then, yeah, I took this kind of weird route where I'm now doing social and production at a company I never really thought I would be working at, but it's worked out great. And that's why I love being on mostly sports every day is because it does kind of bring me back to those days when I was just starting out talking sports. And that's pretty much yeah, talking what I, all I want to do. I'm very content with just doing that. Yeah, that that's fucking that's awesome. And, you know, props to you for, you know, realizing at 10 that you wanted to start a uh, dumb YouTube show from your house. It took me till I was 29, man. I'm like, sorry. you know, it, it took <laughs> us some time for, for this shit. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, it's awesome to see someone, you know, see someone's dreams come to fruition like that. And the, the way you've done it is awesome. Uh, and a guy who likes to take talk ball. So this is my last question, Frankie. You can run it, run off with whatever you got. But th so a guy who likes to talk ball, diehard Philly fan, right? Mm hmm. Um. In the last 12 months, Eagles start 10 and 1, then collapsed. Uh, Philly start, Philly's up 3 2 in the NLCS, then collapsed. Sixers up 3 2 in the second Save round. Save this for then Max, dude. Come on. Uh, uh, I 95 <laughs> is up for 40 plus years, then collapsed. Yeah. Flyers 75% chance of playoffs, then collapsed. And that's, that's my next point, Frankie, is Max gets all this blame because <laughs> he, he, gets, he gets the big freak. Oh, no. he, he gets all that and stuff. Where, where's your blame? <laughs> why, why do you not have any you guys do you not care about your city are you not a philly sports fan connor where's the blame for number two on you i will i will always say and i defer to uh, the majority of my my co-workers as much as i can um because i i will go on i am the biggest penn state football fan in this office mm -hmm. I, I i don't think that's i think that's by a mile however philly sports even though i love them I'm not the biggest Philly guy. Okay. Uh, a, because I was not actually from the city, and B, because, yeah, my love for sports really started with Penn State football, and I could tell you anything about that team, and I follow them like crazy. I don't have that same uh, – I mean, I still deeply love my Philly sports teams, but it's uh, Penn State football is always number one for me. Um, so Max is – I think the definitive Philly sports guy in the Chicago office. And I think I've kind of taken a backseat, even when I'm on the streams, the streams are always very interesting. First of all, I've never had a good experience on stream. <laughs> um, it, there, there's always a loss. There's always something chaotic happening that backfires on me that there is never a, a good streaming environment, as I'm sure Max would tell you, but <laughs> look what I'm doing for you. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was there for that. And it was like, God, this is, I mean, that moment was very funny, but the stream as a whole, the game sucked. Uh, the Phillies weren't doing anything. It's like, well, what do we do? What do we? Uh, well, you don't have your notepad either, so it's like it must be yeah, tough. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I've never had a, a fun win on stream uh, where I could just kind of like cheer or whatever. But anyway, back to my original point with Max, I defer to him, and I'm like, I'm just gonna let you do you. Uh, like I, I, I'm also not that type of fan where I'm like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> like fuck you, fuck you. like I, that's not me. Yeah. That's um, true, yeah. But right, Max, yeah, he is the face of, yeah, that that type of like Philly scumbag. And I say I'm a Philly scumbag <laughs> too, but I think that's why he gets the majority of it, and I kind of take a backseat. Whereas, yeah, if you know Penn State football uh, lays a, uh, an egg against Ohio State like we did this year, or mm -hmm. if we can't do anything against Michigan, or if we get the the brakes beaten off of us by Ole Miss in the in the bowl game, like yeah, like come at me for that. And I accept all the blame. Whereas, yeah, I think for Philly, it goes more so to uh, Max, which I Mook, I Mook won't might say be number two. Enough, then, but, what'd you say? I said Mook might be might be number two Philly guy then, because he's nah, always rocking the Phillies and the Eagles and all that shit. It's Ron. Yeah, Ron's mega Philly guy. I guess it's well. So yeah, yeah, I was just focusing. Sure. I was thinking yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. True. Ron and Smitty. That was out. Uh, that was another thing I did. Um, Ron and Smitty. I love and they also really helped me out a lot when i was first starting out at the company because we used to do uh first time long time which was the the barstool philly sports podcast they would host it and they allowed me to be on that uh it's just like an extra voice if i had something to, to chime in and say i would cut clips for them um great fun, and even before that wait what was that i said that was great fucking snap sorry i got distracted i'm like a tower, oh sorry, right? sorry sorry did i wait, did i snap yeah, that snap yeah. Was, it was a great. Oh, sorry, I didn't even like, realize that I snapped. That's my bad. No, um, it was, great no, it was yeah. great. It was like the beginning of an anus episode. It was just yeah, it was next class. Yeah, that was shit. Yeah. That was garbage. Was late at night, I'm not even recognizing what I'm doing. But um, <laughs> you know, Ronan Smitty, they they did that. I helped out with that podcast. I also did 
and this actually really helped me out with getting on mostly sports. I did Barstool Philly. I kind of put together like back when KFC, the the one minute man really started to take off. Uh, I was doing a similar style video to that for Barstool Philly, where I would just like give sports takes back when I was in college. And uh, that was great because I got so many negative comments on those videos. And I was like, oh, this is actually like prepping me for if I were to go into a career on air now that I'm on mostly sports there aren't many comments that really like phase me anymore. It's like, great. Yeah. Like this, this is perfect. But anyway, so Ronan and Smitty, I would say are, yeah, the, the two go-to Philly guys uh, in New York for sure. And uh, you can even make a case for this entire office, but then Max Mook, Kate can't forget about Kate. Yeah, um, yeah. We got yeah, a, we got, got a, a bunch back. Of, I can't blame her. She's got a broken. Back. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but we, we got a bunch of Philly people. Some would say too many Philly people uh, in the barstool universe, but I love it. I, I love talking it up with all of them smitty i would always go to uh the the eagles when we went to the super bowl two years ago i went up to his desk like after every single win i was like super bowl we're going to the super bowl yeah uh, obviously it didn't turn out great for us but we did yeah, uh, you did go yeah that's a bullshit holding call yeah yeah what are you gonna do but anyway yeah so i i, I definitely love representing philly sports but there are much bigger philly sports heads at this office and i will reserve my you know true true fandom for penn state and everything going on with penn state because i grew up always wanting to go to penn state and yeah. went to penn state that's yeah, you, you know cover their sports are you happy with james franklin yeah uh this year was really when i started to look at him differently i said coming into this season with how much we've improved in the roster because of how well we recruited these past couple of years with the schedule that was laid out for us, with everything that was going right. We just had new leadership come in, university president, new leadership come in at AD, a bunch of different factors. This should have been the year where we really took a step up and we either beat Ohio State or we beat Michigan. And if we didn't beat either of those two schools and we went 10 and two again, then that was a major fucking problem. And we would have to evaluate James Franklin a little bit differently. I absolutely do now, but Again, it's that classic debate, like, who else do you go get? Like, no, who would be right. better than 10 wins a year going to New Year's Six Bowl games consistently? He still recruits pretty well. Like, I, you can't really – we're, we're, we're on the same – we're on the same side of the story. I know obviously not, not on uh, James Franklin, but I mean, fucking Ryan day. I, you know, th there's the conversation every year with like, you know, you're going to go 11 and one cause you're losing to Michigan. Like it's been that way for day the last three years. Right. So uh, I, I understand where you're coming from. Cause you can't get rid of the guy. We, we got a shot at the fucking playoff every year. With yeah. The guy. Miami so football fan it. chiming in here. Uh, uh, yeah. 10 and two, right. 11 and one sounds fucking excellent. I'd love to see that again since 2001 when you guys stole the fucking natty from us. Yeah. Now the exactly, one year that yeah. Penn State, the, the one year that Penn state had, uh, had a shot, it seemed like was the Saquon year. And you know, you guys were up early that, that game and fucking it, it seemed like, like it, they like it was never coming. Have a QB. That That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, 20, 2016 was the year we won the Big Ten, uh, and, and we only got there by beating you guys on the block field goal. Yep. And then we won the Big Ten. We're ten in, or pardon me, eleven and two, and we did not get into the playoff because of the two losses. That would that yeah. was the main thing. One of them was also a thumping that we took uh, at the hands of Michigan earlier in the year. So that was a year where we had a legitimate claim to get in. But then 2017 was the year when we brought everybody back. Saquon, right. we had yeah. Trace McSorley, uh, we had Mike Gesicki defensively. We had a bunch of dogs, and we should have beat you guys. Yeah, the, I mean, you guys opening the game, Saquon to the crib. I was like, motherfucker. Yeah. Should have beat days. you guys. But then the next week, what really did us in was we had a terrible loss to Michigan State. We lost on a, a game-winning field goal as time expired. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like a three and a half hour rain delay in the middle of that game. It was so just, uh, it, just it was bad. It was really, really bad and awful. It was like seven hours that you invested in that game, and then we lose on a, a last second field goal. And that was also the same week that you mm -hmm. guys got blown the fuck out by Iowa. And if we had just taken care of business against Michigan State, we would have been in the driver's seat, maybe not to win the Big Ten, but to at least have a good chance at the playoff. And, uh, yeah, we we totally blew it. So, yeah, you're right. That was the year where we really had 
the <laughs> best shot. Um, even though, again, like I said, I thought coming into this past season, we had possibly the best roster that we've ever had under Franklin, and we just totally squandered it. But whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure the I'm sure the barstool breakdown viewers don't care as much about my Penn State football opinion. No, you're I'm, good. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. I asked about it. I'm I'm curious about it. So fuck them. Whatever. That's that's true. I I, yeah. I just had to get that in there real fast. No, uh, for the barstool breakdown viewers, by the way, uh, Jerry After Dark just finished his 18 hole hole in one thing. So no, he didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's done. Four oh, hours. Shit, dude. Are you what? serious? Yeah, yeah. No, I just I looked down on my phone. I've had it like Three hours. Years. And uh, I looked down and said, thanks for watching. It was four hours, like just over four hours he did it. So, oh, wow. Shit. Yeah. So that's that's what we're doing for you. So if, if Connor wants to talk, you know, some Penn State football, let him talk it. All right. See, look, I already shut him up for you. We're good. To go. <laughs> Thank you. That's <laughs> crazy. I can't believe he did that. Yeah. All right. Like, that's impressive. I thought like I'd be done with this and be like, all right, let me catch the end of the stream. But I no. for sure was thinking that I would be yeah. throwing it back on after this. Well, because when we came on here and now if this goes out on like Saturday or Sunday, I don't know how many yeah. people are going to care about it. But the, the stream was down. I, I came in here yeah. to yeah. hop yeah. on this on this call and Lucas is freaking out because he's like, oh, my God, yeah, the stream's down. I don't know what to do. Yeah. The new uh, stream hadn't started up when we started our interview because I had it up. Crazy. Yeah. Huh. Jerry, that's the one thread with Jerry, and Jerry's fucking awesome. Uh, every time there's a challenge that seems like it's going to take forever, he somehow manages to do it in four or five hours. Yeah, I, I DM'd Lucas. Like, uh, I was like, dude, this one might take a while. And he DM'd me back and was like, uh, he's like, I think it's going to be longer than the first hole in one. Like, because he, he was on like the first hole and it, like 60 strokes in couldn't make it. And they were talking about three is going to be a problem. I was like, oh, this guy's fucked. Yeah, but yeah, it worked crazy. out. Yeah. Lucas is great, by the way. He also did a great job on mostly. Sports. Will you help that kid with his pants? <laughs> Fucking what? get him, get him, get him some pants, get him some real shorts. This is Jerry couldn't look at him. He came out on the stream. Yeah. Jerry couldn't look at him anymore. It was shocking. Yeah, to see him walk through the office. He was wearing the pants again for mostly sports today. I don't know if he got up and showed them on camera. No, he, he didn't. Was... He didn't go to himself. I remember that part though. He's like, yeah, in my black pants. We know that we know yeah, the black right. pants. He he was wearing the jersey on purpose and then he was wearing those pants on purpose and i was yeah, hoping nice that guy he, seems great needs to learn pant size he, he's the man he, he's <laughs> funny as hell uh um, i'm gonna say people like don't get his humor and they're just like he's a fucking idiot whatever and i'm like uh me and him went to the same school we both went to fgcu that oh dunk shit city. yeah yeah that's where i graduated from years before him but i actually was there during that dunk city time that was the fucking best honestly i'm not gonna lie that is sick i totally forgot about that yeah no i forgot that he was an fgcu guy so yeah that's that's pretty crazy He's the man. All right. Yeah. Well, I only got one more thing, and there was really no way to like just randomly bring this up. Everything else kind of, you know, was flowing pretty well there. But I just have written down here: you don't seem like a drug guy. Have you ever done any? What? <laughs> Not really. I mean, everyone freshman, goes to college, right? Freshman year of college, I, I smoked weed. That was it. Uh, yeah. See, it's that's not what I'm saying. Like, that. like that's I. I knew it. I could just. I just. I could tell certain people it's all right. It's not a bad thing. I just was wondering because it seems like you're judgmental you know, right now, Frankie. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, I mean, it seems obviously, like you're obviously I'm judging the fact that you're 24 <laughs> years old and you're on the straight narrow and you have a great job and I'm jealous of you. Is that okay? That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, I'm never, just, never I'm just saying, that office video. is to be a to not smoke at that office and you got you know biz at you know on viva tv being like yeah that's where we smoke our joints back there you know it's just <laughs> yeah like, it's just hilarious i'm like jesus they have a joint smoking spot like <laughs> i i just know the the very few times i did it i was the most boring person on the planet <laughs> and i was so not fun to be around and i would just like overthink in my head nonsense i'd be so caught up in my own head and i was just not talking to anybody and i'd be in these social settings even if it was just my boys like hanging out in somebody's basement i'm like i i'm not fun to be around right now i'm just yeah. like there and yeah, i just yeah. was not no, where you get all self-conscious and paranoid about it like shit yeah. how can i be more fun you try to say something you're like fuck that's stupid why did i <laughs> yeah. say that yeah I get yeah that. whereas if i'm drinking i yeah oh the vibes come up. like I, I feel like i'm more uh personable way more personable maybe too personable and i can you know no, you're, the, you're, you're the man when when we met when frankie and i met in chicago we met you that night at uh the rabbit hole there yeah in chicago. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh you and know. you were the man you were like the first guy like, hey what's up guys thanks for coming like, oh you're big fans and then yeah we were shooting the shit and yeah 
it kind of helped us start talking talking to everyone else so we appreciate that kind of yeah yeah well, it was great meeting you guys and i'm glad <laughs> that now what is that 10 months later yeah uh yeah nine two? nine months yeah yeah we're um, getting there. yeah uh, i'm glad that we've been able to to keep in touch and everything and i love what you guys have been doing by the way um and i love that you guys have been able to really uh break through and get some of the the big guys on here whether it's you know people in content and the behind the scenes people you've gotten on here have been great interviews too and uh you guys you know you've been personable you've been respectful you've been overall uh great dudes and obviously people see that and that's why they want to come on the show so um yeah this has been very very cool to see what you guys have crafted and i love following you guys and yeah hopefully we get to see each other again sometime down the line yeah uh, because yeah well, well, Dude, that's yeah. awesome i appreciate those words for sure man yeah. that's great and i mean we used to do back in the day we used to make the person we were interviewing be like all right you got to get the next person on so who are you going to get for us whatever which was kind of a genius idea because it was a lot easier for me than just dming you know a bunch of people tj is the one that on. started that TJ, yeah right TJ exactly just randomly shouted out he's like i you know gia quigs who quigs never answered yeah uh, or, and then someone else i forget who it was but gia came on and was uh, like next interview so it, it helped and you know yeah they, we appreciate that it's it's uh it's cool to know that you guys do see it and you're like you know getting brandon fucking walker on the podcast yeah that huge. was just Get, incredible you know getting nick train and nick train is my huge. that's like, my number one so that was just like shout out stephen chase second episode or frank Jay. the tank second episode like what the fuck I, we, I think we should just repost the frank episode i think i said that last week that. when we didn't have an episode i said we should just repost frank the tank it got like i gotta i gotta like learn views. i gotta it's learn crazy. how to download it and do like a like edit it proper this time because our first yeah. few episodes was just this screen like i, I have the i have the uh the original file i'll do that you could cut this part sorry yeah that's um, why but <laughs> no, just to no. clarify real quick before connor just before we end this not a drug guy at all little weed sure whatever especially back in the day college whatever but absolutely not a drug guy so no judgment whatsoever i was just saying as one that's not i could feel like i could yeah. judge when people are not so there. i was just playing around you know no no weed um no really the other junk yeah nothing nothing i just uh if i do like to have a good time i i stick to beer we appreciate the con words really doing we appreciate yeah. you staying up late with us we appreciate you like you know coming on and uh you know going back on like like you mentioned earlier you said that at first it was like hold on like i don't know if i should go on yet like i kind of want to get you know everything going but we appreciate you coming on and uh yeah, the kind words really humbled me, man. That that that's uh that's that's really cool that you guys view us that way. And uh, yeah, you're welcome on the show anytime, man. Like, thank uh, you. You know, yeah. I I, lo I love this job. I love this company. Fuck I love yeah. coming to work every single day, and I love that people are so passionate about it, like you guys, where we get to continue to do this stuff. And uh, yeah, no, it's it's been fun to see all that you guys do and how you guys support us. And uh, yeah. It's yeah, just, so, it's all love. Sully, you know? Sully just gave out a huge fucking Viva laying next to his girlfriend. He, he, yeah. he loved that. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. So, yeah, yeah, seriously, thank you guys so much. And uh, we should do this again sometime. It's fun. It's the box to break down. Go ahead and give it to me. Break down. That's to those guys. Oh!